Across the country, homelessness is becoming a crisis. I want to know how you're going to strengthen people to get out of homelessness. Are you planning to do anything to stop the increase of homelessness, or is this just a welcome sign for the rest of the country? You need to disperse the problems. This is a decision between whether we keep people on the streets or whether we take them off the streets. And in some places, it's driving a divide between the housed and the homeless. What does it take to be seen as a person? How's that feel, Queen? Instead of a problem. What is so complicated about that? I get darker tones to put on, and then I put on the concealer to lighten up around the eyes and stuff. I don't even know what to get anymore. I have a hard time picking what it is that I'm getting because I want to make sure that I'm not wasting my money on anything because, you know, I'm homeless. Twenty-nine-year-old Arian Williams has been homeless for the last five years. She's part of a new wave of homelessness where women are on the front lines. It's an epidemic that can be clearly seen on the streets of Los Angeles. I always have to wash my face. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's a lot easier. Sometimes I shower at the church on Gower. Most of the time it's in my tent with a lot of baby wipes and soap. When you see homeless people, your brain can't fathom, honestly, how somebody could be out there. All it takes for you to be homeless is they raise your rent and you lose your job if you're homeless the next month, point blank. One of Arian's most surprising survival techniques involves beauty. This is my makeup bag. I use my makeup to cope with being out here to make me feel less homeless. Well, I've had a few jobs. I had to wear makeup to work every day because that's what everybody else was doing. And if I don't, then I'll definitely stand out. When they find out when you're homeless, they treat you a lot differently. Whether I live inside or outside, I'm still a human being. I still have needs and necessities just like the next person. For Arian, a thin layer of eyeshadow keeps her connected to society, but it doesn't shield her from the realities of the street. What is it like to be a woman out on the streets? If a woman is out here by herself, she is a walking target. Every homeless woman I've ever met has been raped. What kind of unique challenges are faced by women who are experiencing homelessness? The challenge is that there simply aren't enough resources. There aren't enough women-focused programs or women-focused housing. Just 17% of the shelter beds in Los Angeles are designated for women year-round, and many of them are in mixed-gender spaces. The services that do exist are largely concentrated on Skid Row, Skid Row has become a shorthand for the area in cities where homelessness gets pushed to the margins. The most infamous case can be found in LA, where the city has historically tried to contain the majority of its homeless shelters, services, and people. Today, there are more than 2,000 people living on the streets in an area that's less than half a square mile. It's become the site for some of the most comprehensive services in the county, but it's also known as a dangerous place, especially for women. Dodge is really high strung right now. I don't know if you guys know, but you guys need security for real, though. Oh, for sure, you guys need security. On Skid Row, it's evil, trifling, and scary. And it's very dangerous, darling. Like, it's very scary here. Despite this reputation, Skid Row is also the site of the only shelter in this city that refuses to turn away women, Union Rescue Mission. We refuse to leave uh, ladies out on the street. They feel like they've escaped from a war zone. To meet the overwhelming demand, URM blows up hundreds of mattresses and puts them anywhere they can. On any given night, three to 400 women find shelter here, but it's just a drop in the bucket. 
What happens if this continues and there isn't a massive intervention? I already think we're past the tipping point. The other day I got a call, there was a 26-year-old woman who ran into our building naked after being beaten and raped. It is a FEMA-like Red Cross-like disaster. And it's not just on Skid Row, it's everywhere in LA. In the midst of this disaster, one woman is reaching out. One of each, make sure you, one of each. Shirley Raines single-handedly started Beauty to the Streets, a volunteer-run project that provides home-cooked meals, makeup, and more. I don't think I can end homelessness. I think it's a gangrene situation right now. We're trying to put a bandit on a gunshot wound. She comes to Skid Row every Saturday, along with a few friends. The Fighters for the World is a biker club that offered to come out and support Shirley. Skid Row is like, all right, we don't care what happens there. Keep everybody in one area as long as it stays there. So we decided to come down and lend our aid to make sure they're safe. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a single police officer since I actually got down here. Right, no, we haven't either, so. It seems like you guys are sort of helping to pick up the slack. Whatever the powers that be, however they're working out their money, I don't think it trinkles down here. Because they don't see it, it's not a problem. Right. They don't come down here, but it's rampant. It's everywhere. It's very important to, to put something on and see something other than what you're going through. It's gonna get warm in a second, LaFonda, okay? It's nail polish, too. Oh, okay. This could be any of us out here. I think that's the biggest thing people need to understand. There are real life stories down here. There's real life trauma down here. This could be you. I did the whole stay at home mom thing. I never imagined that this would happen to me, hitting rock bottom. Michelle Fennell is a 37-year-old mother of four. This is them. That's the family photo. Whose world was turned upside down when she had to flee an abusive boyfriend. I was in a really bad domestic violence situation. My abuser was trying to kill me. I had to leave my apartment and I became homeless. There was really no resources for me and my children. My children went to go stay with different family members. After three years on the streets, Michelle finally got housing but the only option available to her was a single room occupancy unit. It means that she still has to be apart from her kids, except for the occasional visit. What is it like not having your children living with you? It's so hard. I have to be strong for my children and make sure we get back into where we once were as a family. I'm gonna stay here for a while till I'm able to save up and transition to something else, just the, the money. To live in a, a regular apartment is kind of like intense. Michelle's case is an increasingly common one. The lack of housing options and support makes it easy to get knocked off your feet and incredibly hard to get back up. We have a responsibility as a community to care for those who are in this crisis. We're not accepting people who've experienced homelessness as our neighbors. But not everyone feels the same way. Hundreds of people, many who live and work in Koreatown, raise their voices in protest today. Homeless housing has proven to be a hot button issue in Sherman Oaks. Nothing solves homelessness like a home. Not in my backyardism is the biggest barrier to any success of helping people off the streets. As the homelessness crisis grows, so does the backlash. Some residents, fearing for their personal safety and property, are pushing back against homeless services and shelters in their neighborhoods. Venice is the site of some of the most vocal, not in my backyard, or NIMBY opposition. What has become one of the most expensive beachfront neighborhoods in Los Angeles now fears it's being overrun by outsiders. Good evening, everybody. We're here in Venice at a neighborhood council meeting to learn about a newly proposed housing plan for the homeless. And as you can see, it's a little bit chaotic. We could walk away from homelessness. That would not solve homelessness. This is a decision between whether we keep people on the streets or whether we take them off the streets. I think that's an easy decision. Thank you. I have heard the real and genuine fear of women living on our streets in the encampments who are afraid of being beaten or being raped. If we do not do this in Venice, the one thing I can guarantee you 
is that the status quo will continue and the problem will continue to get worse. I, we're going to go to questions from the audience. My name is Wendy Lockett. I'm from Venice, and I'm homeless. What do you intend to do to ensure that we don't b both have encampments and bridge housing, and we're just one big homeless community? We could take that same amount of money and put somewhere else where we would actually get these people the homes they so desperately need. What is so complicated about that? I am in favor of homeless housing, but I am not in favor of containment policies. What you're doing, I believe, is encouraging more weakness. And I want to know how you're going to strengthen people to get out of homelessness. You need to disperse the problem. That's what happens when there's a riot. You disperse it. That's, you're not thinking in those terms. I don't understand why you're not. Because well, I'll tell you why. Because it's no longer just in one place or another. It is everywhere in the city. Regardless of the NIMBY movement's intentions, it stalls progress, hijacking the conversation of how to solve homelessness and making it about who should have to deal with it. I wanted to know what the mayor had to say. Do residents, even wealthy ones, have a right to fight where a shelter is going in a neighborhood? It's literally the most complicated issue I think I've ever dealt with and ever will deal with in public policy because it has so many different elements and each person is different. I think all of us have a responsibility to solve homelessness. It's about getting to know one person on the street, figuring out what her story is and figuring out what is that combination lock that we have to crack open to make sure she can get back you know, off the street and onward with her dreams. So you, the colors you talked about. Yeah, I want it fine. <laughs> How's that feel, Queen? What would you say to someone who argues that hair and makeup shouldn't be a primary focus with the homeless? What I want to do is just restore dignity, just make them feel important and make them feel beautiful. Yeah, we cooking with fire. All the women that I take care of right now, I took care of them with food and water, and I didn't get, really get to know them that well. Until I started giving makeup and doing hair, it's like the beauty salon. They open up when they're in the chair. I'm writing, I'm still human. After being treated like I'm less than human for being broke, you know, I feel like the world needs a reminder. You stay in the mission over there, baby? Yeah, I've just been there for three weeks. Three weeks? How is it in there? I'm trying to get housing. I would say that we have to understand these women are not out here by choice. Something happened. Somewhere along the line, they were broken. Somewhere along the line, they were damaged. Whatever broke them and put them on the street, we need to start with that. It's been about three years. Me fleeing from my abuser and me actually finding housing. Just living in my own place, I'm able to figure out my game plan. Because if I didn't have this apartment, I wouldn't be able to go out there and, and worry about a career. You're not wasting any time. Mm -mm. Okay. I can't afford to. I have my children. My babies, they keep me motivated. It's already lifting. How did it feel when you first sat down and Shirley was washing your hair? And it's, it's helping out a lot. And when I go look, look for a place or something, I'll be looking up the park. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I haven't had color in a long okay. time. Mm -hmm. Alicia, it looks so good. What do you think everyone at the mission's gonna say? They'll be like, wow, where you were? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome, and how you look and you know your appearance and everything is important to everybody. What cool. she does here is powerful. Everybody needs to look pretty, right? Alicia transformed before my eyes, and it wasn't just the shampoo and color. Shirley's kind words and compassion made Alicia glow. They deserve kindness, they deserve food, they deserve love, they deserve respect. You're not your situation on the street, you're not the tent that you sleep in. Open your eyes. And your hair and your name gonna be on the back. Oh, look how cute, it's cute. Oh, don't cry, love, muffin. Don't cry, love. It's clear that homelessness is an incredibly complex problem, and solving it here in Los Angeles and all across the country will take time and resources. But just as vital is recognizing that behind every struggle is a story. It's something that we can all do that costs nothing and can make a difference now. Thanks for watching Refinery29. For more videos like this, click here. And to subscribe, click here.